If you truly believe in ghosts, you probably have a creepy as all heck personal story that acts as your main reason for believing. Here are just a few of the scariest short ghost stories, as told by first-hand witnesses. I worked at a public pool. It was rumored to be haunted, but you never really pay any attention to stories, do you? At night, I would work alone after hours cleaning the building and the pool. One night, around 2 a.m., I was cleaning the changing rooms. The pool had been closed for four hours at this time. Suddenly, I hear the sound of a child's laughter and bare feet running across the pool deck. I go out and scan the area. There's nobody in sight. The doors are all closed and locked. There is nowhere a kid could be hiding. I checked the pool deck for wet footprints like they do in classic horror movies, but there were none. I rechecked the doors and the security monitors. I was the only person in the building. It was very unsettling. My girlfriend's grandfather's ashes were on a little shelf in the living room, right next to a very solid and heavy angel statue. One weekend, she and I are fooling around on the living room couch and, out of the corner of my eye, I see the angel statue fly off of the wall, accompanied with a deep grunt. We both sat there in shock, and, after a few moments, I asked if she had heard the grunt sound as well, to which she agreed. Later that night at dinner, we told her parents what happened, and my girlfriend's younger sister burst into tears, saying she had seen a dark figure at the foot of her bed the last couple of nights, but didn't want anyone to think she was crazy. After that day, I was a believer. My uncle's house out on a very eastern part of New York was said to be haunted because the family that used to own it in the 1800s decided not to give it to the stableman and sold it instead. My uncle's friend and her sister stayed over one night, and the friend noticed a maid bringing towels down the stairs when she woke. She saw the maid again, bringing more laundry down the stairs. She was so impressed by my uncle hiring staff. He's a neurologist in New York City and had no issues spending some extra money on the finer things. She went back to bed and later woke up and came downstairs to see my uncle and his friend just chatting. She asked where the maid went and thought that the maid might have been cooking breakfast. My uncle had no idea what she was talking about and asked what she looked like while pulling a confused face. He walked her to the living room and pointed to an old picture. She said that was the woman. My uncle replied, Yeah, she has been dead for about 100 years. When I was around 9, 10 years old, I remember waking up to see a large shadow standing at the foot of my bed. I was living with my dad at the time. He has a very large, five-floor terrace house built in the 1800s. Every so often there would be an unexplainable event happen, such as footsteps when there's no one there or voices. On the night this happened, it was just my dad and I in the house. My sister was staying with my mom at the time. I woke up and noticed the door to my room was wide open. I normally sleep with it closed. I then became aware of a large shadow-like figure watching me from the end of the bed, around seven feet tall or thereabout. Just as I'd focused on the figure, it seemed to melt away and the door to my room slowly close. Understandably, I was traumatized by the whole experience and didn't really sleep much that night. I asked my dad the next day if he was in my room, knowing he isn't seven foot tall anyway, and he denied any knowledge of the event. I used to be in the military and the training camp bunk that we lived in was said to be haunted. Occasionally, our stuff would go missing and reappear in weird places, like under our bed, or inside a bag that we had zipped up and stuff. No big deal, right? I mean human error and all. Then came the instance that freaked everyone out. It was one night after lights out, and my friend was on his phone texting his girlfriend. Most of us were drifting off to sleep and were lying on our beds, etc. Suddenly, he heard the shuffling of feet from the corridor, so thinking that it was our sergeant, he quickly hid his phone under his pillow. 
rolled over on his side and pretended to sleep. Till this day, what happens next chills me to the bone. While he pretended to sleep, he heard someone right behind him at the other side of his bed going, Don't worry, you can continue to pretend sleep. I would dismiss this as a figment of his imagination, except about five other people around him heard it as well, including me. Creepier still, there was no one there, and it was the voice of a little girl that said it. For reference, our training camp was in the middle of an island and was set up away from the main admin blocks. The island has been closed by the government for army training purposes for the past 15 years, so there were definitely no civilians around, let alone kids. To make matters freakier, when we came back from our weekend home leave, there was a bunch of female hair on his bed, neatly bundled up long and jet black. Under his pillow was a note. Remember me? Now, as I said, we were in the middle of a forest in the middle of an island. And at that point in time, there were no female recruits, personnel on the island. Our bunks were locked up for the weekend, and the duty sergeant had no idea that the incident happened. We never spoke about it after that night. Still chills me to the bone thinking about it. 